Well, welcome to this tutorial series on Poser Pro Game Dev Edition. What do we cover in this exactly? Well, Poser Pro Game Dev is a fantastic way to prepare characters for export to Unity or other gaming authoring software. Game Dev lets you prepare, modify, and animate the content and then export it with a huge time savings. In this movie, we'll review what this tutorial series covers and a little bit about me, the author. By the end of this series, you'll be able to accelerate your use of the program and ultimately the game development that you're working on. The sections we cover start with using pre-built objects. Poser ships with a huge volume of content that you can use, at least the game dev version does. And that's one of the hallmarks of the program. So we look at ways to use the tool sets inside Poser to analyze some of this content and see whether it's a good fit for your gaming objectives. We also begin working with static objects and doing some scene building inside of Poser, some considerations for that in terms of textures and texture export, all sorts of stuff like that. One of the big things that is important, especially with fixed objects, is collider objects. And while you can create them inside of Unity, they're fairly coarse types of collider objects. If you've got detailed geometry where characters can be hiding behind it or something like that, then you need a more complex collider object, and Poser lets you do that. So we look at ways to do that. We do some great polygon reduction to be friendly to the mobile devices you may be exporting to. We bring it into Unity and look at how to integrate those things together. Now, character preparation. Poser has some fantastic tool sets to go ahead and modify existing content. So we look at ways to do that. We set up the content, do all the things we need to to keep file sizes small for Unity. We work with animations that we author inside Poser, and creating those animations is super easy. That is what Poser was set up to do. So it's just fantastic for that. We export to Unity, we bring in the objects, and we start working with them ultimately in Mechanim to go ahead and see how we create transitions between some of the animations we create inside Poser itself. We also have the ability for character clothing. Since Poser Pro Game Dev ships with a huge amount of content, basically since the beginning of the development of the program, there are variations between the content, and we take a look at that so you can better decide which ones are good fits for what you may be doing inside of your game. We'll also look at how Poser approaches clothing, and more importantly, how you can go ahead and repurpose some of this clothing to characters. Not everything is a perfect candidate for that, but there are some fantastic tool sets inside of Poser to adapt clothing from one character to another. So we go ahead and do that. We look at ways to consider other props, such as hair, which ones are a good fit for your program or your game, depending on the outcome for it. And then we look at ways to go ahead and take the characters, combine them into a single character, which is how Unity expects to receive the characters in. And then we go in and look at some of the fantastic tool sets that the game diversion has to eliminate polygons that you do not see to keep the file sizes light. We also reduce polygons and props and things like that, so there's just some neat ways to go ahead and use this program to save some time. Now, while everything comes out of Poser into Unity very, very well, you may want to change some of the animation capabilities out of the generic so that it matches some other capabilities Unity has, so you can go ahead and work with some stock animation that's available in the Unity Store. So we look at how to do that. Also, there is a complex feature in the game dev version, and by complex I mean advanced, to build things like animation sets where a single poser file can hold multiple groups of animations that will go ahead and import automatically into Unity and be recognized by Unity as separate animations. Nice time saver that way as well. So we look at those tool sets to do that. There are also the ability to animate with morph dials. Now there's two kinds of morphs, vector-based and polygonal-based. They have different types of success rates and things like that as you export them, so we do cover that. Poser is not a perfect software, so I like to approach things with an eye towards the types of things you may be encountering, and ultimately we bring those into Unity to see how they work. With all this content you've got in Poser, you do have the ability to change it, modify it, and so we look at ways to do that with pre-built abilities like this character, Allison. You can actually make her look like a real person instead of, say, a Barbie doll, but we also look at ways to use some of the capabilities to create your own morph dials, how you change and customize a character. So you're not stuck with stock types of things that come with the program. You can customize it as much as you want. We look at some of the tools, such as magnets, and then we look at some applications of morphing tools. For example, with a shirt we have that as we go through the fitting room, it kind of comes apart, and there's ways to fix that. So some real-world applications of the tool sets and situations you may encounter. Now we also work with props, how to attach them to characters' hands and actually replace body parts with props if you'd like to and some things for animation considerations. 
We also work with some imported FBX files. The one thing about FBX is that it is not a universal standard, and there's all sorts of problems or issues you can encounter working with FBX that was not authored in Poser. We look at that and some ways to manage some of those issues prior to export to Unity. And finally, we end with a section on rigging and custom characters. While Poser has a bunch of stuff, you may want some other stuff in there. If you work with tool sets from humanmesh.org or find something else through some 3D content you want to bring in and then create a skeleton for so you can output it into Unity, Poser gives you the tool sets to do that. So we go ahead and bring in a character. We look at ways that the program auto-configures meshes against the skeletons that are created inside Poser and then some other tool sets to unify those so that it animates correctly, both in Poser and inside of Unity. Finally, there are some joint editors that really make the process of having believable body bends and things like that where the mesh doesn't tear. There's so many great tools to go ahead and accelerate your custom character development for Unity while still inside Poser. Finally, who am I? Well, that's me. I uh, work in 3D and illustration professionally and have for quite a number of years. I write for certain magazines. You may have read them, like 3D World, 3D Artist, and Microfilmmaker Magazine. I have also been a presenter at SciGraph and an instructor at the National Association of Broadcasters, so I kind of get around. I also work with some companies that you might recognize. I love this job and work with software like this and other software every day. So by the time you're done with this, I want you to be able to really accelerate your encounter with Poser and Unity and have a good time developing games. Let's get going.